Hi, today we're going to take apart my Libra Mini computer. So this is the Libra Mini version 1. And this device is sold by a company called Purism. You can see their name there and their little square box logo. And it's a mini PC. Similar in many respects to an Intel Nook, although the form factor is slightly different. The motherboard is a different size and the uh, mounting holes of the motherboard are also a different size. So this would not fit in a standard Nook case, uh, but it's uh, quite similar. It's got a laptop type processor in it, a mobile processor, although it's very uh, decent. It's a decent little processor. Can't remember exactly what the model number of that is. They have just released the Libra Mini 2, the version 2 of this, which is exactly the same, except it has a slightly better processor. Now I've been using this for a few weeks now, and it's very capable. Uh, it, uh, I use it to do video editing, um, editing audio and programming. Okay, so let's take this thing apart. We've got two screws, and all the screws throughout this are M2 screws. And they're all interchangeable, which is great. It means you don't have to worry about putting the right screw back into the right hole. So M2 screwdriver, M2 screws, let's dismantle this. Now I have already opened this once today uh, before I made this video. So when we get in there, um, things are a bit empty. You'll see what I mean when we open it up. So I'll just put these screws off to the side. I'm notorious for dropping screws on the floor, so I'll try to be extra careful. That one's being a bit stubborn. I think it's actually unscrewed all the way. I think it's just the clip is holding it in. Let's see. Come on, out you come. Oh no, there goes another one. Rescued it. Brilliant. Okay. So two screws are out. So the next thing is this lid stays on pretty solidly without the screws anyway. So the next thing is to, you sort of got to get a fingernail under there and just lift it up. So there we go. On the lid, I've got an SSD and I've already unplugged it. And you can see it uses this proprietary connector. Let's see if we can focus that a bit better. So it uses this proprietary connector and it has these really thin wires in there and it fits onto this little socket there quite firmly. And I'm always worried that I'm going to damage this and break it. But I was shopping for something else on Banggood and Turns out that they sell these little proprietary SATA cables. So I bought a couple. They're only about a couple of pounds each. Um, so I've got a couple of spares. So if I do ever damage this, I can replace it. I'll put a link to the uh, place you can get these cables in the video description on YouTube. So this little proprietary connector provides power and data uh, connections for the SSD, for the SATA SSD. So now we're into the device. You can see the RAM slots. I've taken the RAM out. It can support up to 64 gigs of RAM. And it uses these little laptop style RAM uh, cards, these memory card things. What do you call them? Sticks. Sticks of RAM. And let's see which one I'm using here. So that's a 32 gig. Uh, DDR4-2666 speed. Um, the motherboard will downclock this because it can't actually handle that speed, but it runs just fine. And RAM speed isn't really that important. Okay, we've got... Um, let's see, if I lift this up, that'll be better. Get the focus on there. So this slot here, this is for an M.2 card with an A, -E, A plus E key. And this provides speed at PCIe 2, uh, 1 times 1. So it's, it's one lane PCIe 2. 
and that's intended for a Wi-Fi card. But what you could do is you can put an adapter in there to convert it to uh, mini PCIe, and then in theory you could run a USB 2 off of that. The upper one, that's an M.2 with, I've forgotten what the key is, but it's your standard key for an NVMe drive, and that just runs along there and screws in there. So that's, that's where you put your NVMe. So there's not much else to see on this side of the board. We've got um, these four screws here uh, for the heatsink, which is on the other side, and we've got these four screws which we're going to use to take out the motherboard. One thing you'll notice is this sort of top section of the motherboard, this whole area, uh, doesn't have any ventilation. There are, there are no slots for air to get out. And uh, that's one of the downsides to this. This top part can get a bit warm, and especially if you've got an SSD and an NVMe crammed in here as well. Okay, so let's take this apart. So we're just going to be taking out these four screws first of all. And you can see this one here has a label on it. I assume that's a warranty void type label, and I have already voided the warranty multiple times if that's the case. Um, other things to note before I take this out, there is usually, in this case, there is usually a, a little wire along here and a little wire along here, which are the antenna for if you have a wireless card in here. I never intend to use a wireless card with it, so I ripped those little wires out because they kept getting in the way when I pulled the motherboard out. So those wires are missing. So we'll take out these screws. Now this this device is uh, it's the Librem Mini V1, which you can't buy anymore, but you can get the Librem Mini V2, which is the same price. You can also buy the same computer direct from a Chinese manufacturer, but it won't have the same software on it. So what is special about Purism is that they produce hardware that runs entirely or almost entirely on free software. And by free, I mean open source. I'm not talking about price, I'm talking about freedom. And they have customized this so that it will run with a free BIOS called Coreboot. So the BIOS isn't proprietary. And they've also removed the Intel management engine, or most of it, from the processor and they've sort of neutralized the remaining code. So it should be about as secure and free as you can get with a modern system. And one day, hopefully, we'll be able to get rid of the Intel management engine entirely. Let's get this board out now. So I've taken the four screws out. To get the board out, I just lift it by these two chunky USB ports and sort of just, just gently tease it out. There we go. And Purism also make software as well as uh, hardware. They make an operating system called PureOS, which is a GNU Linux distribution based on Debian, I believe, and it's entirely free software. And I'll make another video about PureOS because I haven't really used it, so it'd be interesting to um, install it and try it out. Uh, let's see, we'll get rid of this for now. Okay, so this is the underside of the motherboard. And you can see we've got a squirrel cage type fan. This is your standard laptop fan. And it blows through this radiator heatsink there to get the hot air out of the computer. Got a nice copper heat spreader there that sits on top of the CPU. And uh, the, the thermals on this are quite good. I was rendering some videos and these were quite chunky videos. And it got up to about 70 degrees, which is not good for a desktop for example, but considering this was crammed into a little box, it's uh, not bad. So the fan is powered from this side of the board. Under this bit of sticky tape we've got the little fan header, and that's a three, three pin fan. So I'm assuming it doesn't have PWM, pulse width modulation for the fan speed control. So I believe it will be controlled by voltage, which may be down to the BIOS, I'm not 100% sure. We've got a CMOS battery there that just keeps the uh, clock ticking over when there's no power applied. Uh, I can't see the BIOS chip. I think it's going to be that one that's under there. Let's see if we can just get a bit of focus on there. So I think that's going to be the BIOS chip, but we'll have a look when we take the heatsink off. So to get the heatsink off, we flip it over and we've got these four screws there.
There we just flip that over. I can feel the. Oh, there we go. It's coming off my hand. So let's just put that down gently. So if we take this heat sink off, what we can reveal. Well, we've got a couple of things. We have the CPU die and the GPU, the integrated GPU. So that's Intel's integrated graphics, which are getting better year on year. I was doing some uh, gaming on this with, um, I was playing Urban Terror and Haven and Hearth, which are not super graphics intensive games, but um, I was playing Haven and Hearth on another computer with an RX um, 470 AMD GPU, and it, the performance was terrible. It was like five FPS. With this little thing, I was getting about 20 FPS. So that's quite a significant difference. And considering this is an integrated chip, I was really surprised. Now you'll notice there's no thermal paste on here. That's because I dismantled this earlier and I cleaned off the thermal paste so we could have a nice uh, look at it. Uh, but of course, usually that'd be covered in um, grey goop. I've got this little bit of a post-it note here just covering over a QR code. And that's because somebody on the Purism forum said, if I'm going to be showing the underside of the motherboard, I should probably cover that over in case it's got any secret information that I don't want getting out. I have no idea what it's for, but it's covered over anyway. So on the underside of the fan, we've got this lovely big copper heat spreader. It doesn't have any heat pipes or um, vapor chamber or anything like that. It's just a big lump of copper and then this secondary block is just soldered onto there. We can sort of see the solder squirting out from there. And then that just sits on top of the CPU. Try and hold that in one hand so I can focus the camera. And I'm pretty sure that is the BIOS chip. I think it says Windbond on it. There's a little something on there getting in the way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it says Windbond and they usually make BIOS chips. So I'm pretty sure that's the BIOS chip. But of course it could be one of these other little chips. That one says Windbond as well, so who knows? Maybe it's that one or even that one. Um, So this is similar in size to an Intel Nook, but the hole spacings are completely wrong for mounting this in an Intel Nook case. And also, I think it is slightly uh, larger, the uh, motherboard. But if we go back over to the uh, rest of the case, that's just the power button there that just slots in a hole. There it is. Uh, if we go back to this case, this base plate can actually be removed. In fact, let's do that now. Let's put those out the way. So to get the base plate out, we've got one screw there, one screw there, and then these two motherboard standoffs are actually holding it in at this side. Now two of the motherboard standoffs aren't actually in line with each other, they're off center, which is another reason this wouldn't fit in an Intel nutcase. And what I was thinking of doing when I mount this, or when I attempt to mount this in my fanless case, is rather than making some kind of adapter, I was thinking of just using this base plate as an adapter and uh, putting it inside the new case. I think it'll work because we've also got these two screw holes here that I can make use of to mount it in a, in a different case. So that'll be a good little thing to try out. And if it works, it saves me some work having to make a new, uh, make a specialized adapter for this. So there we go. Here's a little tip. You can actually use a screwdriver to uh, turn these motherboard standoffs. They just slots in the end quite nicely there. There we go. And now I just lift this off. So there's the frame. This is all metal, by the way. I'm not sure what sort of metal. Mm, I think it's aluminium. Anodized aluminium, possibly painted. Who knows? But yeah, metal, very nice. Good for thermal conductivity. So here's the base plate. 
and we've got these vents here and these two mounts which I assume are for mounting it on the back of a monitor. I guess that's the idea. But yeah, so I'm hoping I can just adapt this and use it as a separate little mounting thingy-majig for when I put it inside a different case. So I hope you found this video somewhat interesting. If you do have any questions or comments, leave them below the video on YouTube. I will have a link in the description uh, to Purism Store. It's an affiliate link, so if you buy through there, I'll get a little bit of money from it. If you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like this and you'd like to keep up with what I'm doing with the Librem Mini, please click the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.